Hey guys, welcome to the Kalashnikov and today I have an awesome tutorial for you which is going to be the complete guide on how to play as the buffed trapper. Yes, there is a buffed trapper, there's a new trapper in town and if you've been living under a rock this past few weeks, uh, a few weeks ago a new patch was released that added some much needed buffs to both the trapper and the hag. So this video is actually kind of like an updated version of a video I made a few months ago where I discussed how to play as the trapper and that video got quite a good number of views and lots of positive response. So I felt it would be a good idea to make a new video highlighting the changes in the new trapper and how best to play as him. So this guide, this complete guide will be divided into four main sections. The very first one will talk about the unique abilities of the trapper, the advantages and disadvantages of playing as the trapper in comparison to other killers. And then the second stage will talk about the best perks to run with the trapper. And then we'll talk about the best add-ons to run with the trapper. And then finally, in stage 4 or part 4, we'll talk about strategies that you can employ whenever you play as the trapper. And I will show you some clips from actual games I've played as the trapper, highlighting how best to strategize and play as the trapper to maximize your kills. So without much further ado, let's jump right in. Alright, so the trapper's ability involves setting traps. That's what he does. He sets traps in the hopes that survivors will step onto the trap or he can also lure survivors or chase survivors into areas of the map where he has set traps in. Now with the trapper you're gonna get the basic standard abilities which means that his terror radius, uh, his movement speed of 115%, his launch, his vaulting speeds, everything about the trapper is standard. That's what you're gonna get whenever you play as the trapper. Now the trapper also has one very unique ability of being the only killer in the game that can inflict damage onto a survivor without being anywhere close to where that survivor is. So a lot of times whenever you're playing as a trapper you might be chasing one survivor at one end of the map and then another survivor who is at the other end of the map might step onto one of your traps leaving them injured or even in the dying state if you use uh, certain kinds of add-ons. So the trapper has that distinct unique ability as being the only killer in the game that can do such a thing. Now one thing I want to point out here is that the devs have termed the trapper as easy to play as. It's easy to play as the trapper and honestly it's Things like this that make me question just how well the devs know their killers. Because how else can you explain them stating that to play as the Wraith it's intermediate, playing as Freddy is hard, playing as the Hog is intermediate, but then playing as the Trapper or playing as the Hillbilly is easy. I don't understand the logic behind this and uh, quite frankly I don't care to understand the devs logic on why they would think that playing as the Trapper is easy while playing as the Wraith is intermediate. I don't understand it, but one thing I can tell you is that if you are new to the game of Dead by Daylight or you plan on playing Killer as a, as, as a beginner, uh, the Trapper is not the Killer to start off with. You want to go with the Wraith. Wraith, in my humble opinion, is the most basic Killer and the easiest Killer to play as in Dead by Daylight. Playing as the Trapper can be incredibly frustrating and very difficult and I'm going to highlight some of the disadvantages of playing as the Trapper. Alright, so the very first major disadvantage of playing as the Trapper is the fact that his ability or his power of being able to lay traps does not compensate or cannot substitute for any of the killer perks. Now what I'm saying here is that if you look, take a look at other killers like say Freddy for example, Freddy's ability to draw survivors into the dream world gives him inbuilt uh, tracking perks. He basically has the stalker, he's got barbecue and chili, he's got Nostris Corn, he's got whispers, he's got spies in the shadow, all built in in his power because once he pulls a survivor into the dream world, as long as that survivor is within a certain distance from him, he can see the auras of those survivors. So he really doesn't need tracking perks. Uh, the same can be said of the Doctor. The Doctor has a shock therapy. Once a survivor is within a certain tier of madness, the Doctor will be able to track them just using his ability. You've got the Wraith who can cloak, which means that he doesn't need Insidious. It also means that he can counter against uh, Burrow Time, which is one of the most powerful uh, altruistic packs for survivors. Uh, you look at uh, the Chainsaw Brothers. 
the hillbilly and leatherface they've got chainsaws that can instantly down survivors which means that uh, they don't need no ed the same could be said of michael myers and so on basically at this point you get what i'm trying to say the chopper's ability to lay traps cannot be used as a substitute for any perks which means that basically all the 48 killer perks in the game can be applied can be applicable uh, whenever you're playing as the trapper so that's the first uh, major disadvantage of playing as the trapper the second disadvantage here is the fact that the trapper is in my humble opinion actually the slowest killer when it comes to using the ability what am i talking about here the trapper let's say for example you don't have a trap in your hand the time it's gonna take for you to find a trap walk over to where the trap is pick it up and then walk over to where you want to lay the trap and then set the trap that time could take you anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds which is in dead by daylight a lifetime so it can be very frustrating not having enough time to actually pick up a trap lay the trap and then to compound things make things even worse a survivor nearby can easily walk over to where your trap is and disable the trap within a few seconds so that's another very frustrating thing of playing as the trapper another major frustration of the traps is the fact that when a healthy survivor steps onto a trap they become injured they're taken into the injured state now if that same survivor or another injured survivor steps onto another trap well guess what they will remain in the injured state they're not going to go into the dying state this does not make any sense to me at all and i think it's incredibly unfair because it's almost like saying if, if the huntress hits you the very first time with one of her hatchets you go into the injured state if she hits you again with the hatchet you're gonna go into the dying state but then imagine if the second time the huntress hits you with the hatchet even though you're injured you don't go into the dying state it doesn't make any sense so i don't understand why with the trapper if a healthy survivor steps onto a trap they become injured but then if another injured survivor if that same injured survivor steps onto another trap in fact they can step onto as many as five six traps in the game they will not go into the dying state it doesn't make any sense to me at all and i don't understand why the devs have refused to change this i was really hoping when they announced that they were going to make uh some changes to the bot to the trap to buff him up i was really hoping that they would implement this change where if an injured survivor steps onto a trap they will go into the dying state if they had implemented that change i would honestly rank up the trapper as just beneath the likes of uh, uh the hillbilly and the nurse who are the two strongest killers in the game in my opinion the trapper would be up there with the likes of the huntress leatherface and even uh, michael myers but sadly they didn't implement that change and it doesn't look like they're ever going to do that so that's another frustration of playing as the trapper the one final major disadvantage of playing as the trapper is the fact that there are lots of situations where you might lay a trap directly uh, outside a window or, or directly next to a pallet on the ground and survivors by some miracle would actually run past those traps without even getting trapped and this is something that's very very frustrating and it's something i've always wished the devs will solve by simply making the traps maybe a little bit bigger uh covering more area but the devs haven't done so and uh, it's frustrating because there are times when you will lay a perfectly placed trap right in the middle of a window or a pallet and a survivor will vault through that window and will still not get trapped it happens quite a lot and that can be very very frustrating so let's now talk about the best perks to run with the trapper and also not the best perks to run uh, whenever you play as the trapper but before i go into this let me first of all point out that you might notice a few changes on the screen right now especially my blood points and uh my rank as well and that's because this actual guide was recorded over a period of three different days and of course b between each day i played some extra games i ranked up i spent some blood points so don't freak out if you've noticed the difference and you feel oh something must be wrong there's nothing wrong it's just that this particular guide i recorded it over a period of three days and during that time uh, a few things changed regarding my blood points and my rank so i just wanted to uh, point that out so let me now show you the best perks to run uh, whenever you're playing as the trapper so here's a list of the best perks i believe are suitable for the trapper and before i begin to discuss each one of them in detail let me point out two things first of all this list is very subjective 
I am not in any way claiming that this are factual, that these are in fact the best picks to run as a trapper. No, I am stating this based on my own personal experiences. If I haven't mentioned it already, the trapper is my favorite killer actually and I play a lot as the trapper and over the past year, over the past several months, I've experimented with different kinds of perk combinations and in my humble opinion, these are the best perks to run with the trapper. Second, you will notice that certain perks like Iron Grasp, uh, Agitation, Franklin's Demise, Light Bond, uh, Huntress Lullaby, and so on, some of these perks are not on this list, not because they're not good perks, but because they tend to be quite situational and in fact, there are also good picks to run on every other killer out there. As an example, if you had survivors who don't have flashlights, then light bomb becomes useless. But in a situation where you've got survivors who have flashlights, then light bomb becomes very, very important. If survivors don't have items, then Franklin's demise becomes useless. If survivors have items, then Franklin's demise becomes important, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of like why I have not included such picks on this list because one, they're situational, and two, because these are great perks on every killer out there. So let's take a look at the actual perks I have on this list. And you might notice that most of these perks have to do with time. These are perks that buy you time as the killer, either by speeding up your movement or your actions, or buying you time by slowing down the actions of survivors. But let's take a look at the very first one, Nosis Calling. This has nothing to do with time, but Nosis Calling is one of the strongest tracking perks out there. and I love this perk and I almost always run this perk whenever I play as a trapper. Noed is a fantastic perk, one of the strongest perks out there. And keep in mind that the trapper is more of a mid game to an end game kind of killer. You need Noed as an insurance to help you secure some kills at the end of the game. Hex Ruin is a perk that kind of falls in the same category of uh, Franklin's Demise, uh, Iron Grasp, in that. This is a pick that's great on every killer out there. But the reason why I have chosen to include Hexwin in this list is because the Trapper is one of the very few killers who is defensive. And because the Trapper is more of a mid game to an end game kind of killer, the Trapper needs time to set traps at the start of the game. He needs something to slow down the ability of survivors to fix gens. And Hexwin is one of the very best out there. When Hexwin works, it really, really works. And that's why I have decided to include Hexwin on this list. Brutal Strength, self-explanatory, helps you break pallets faster. Pop Goes to Weasel and Overcharge are there to slow down the time it takes for survivors to fix gens. If I was going to go with one of these two, I would go with Pop Goes to Weasel. I think it's superior to Overcharge. And then you've got Anthophobia and Sloppy Botcha. These are two perks, again, that are used to slow down the actions of survivors. Thanthophobia, when it works, it really, really works. And then Sloppy Butcher because it recently got the buff where when you strike a survivor, they will have the mangled status effect, which means it will take longer for them to heal, especially if they're self-healing. Barbecue and Chili, great on every killer. Remember me and Blood Warden are there primarily for the end game to give you some time to secure some kills at the end of the game. Bamboozle, of course, a great perk, lets you vault faster, also blocks survivors from being able to use uh, certain windows. And Join allows you to recover faster from stuns, whether it's uh, plate stuns or decisive strikes. And then Fire Up is a perk that, to be honest, I haven't used quite often with the Trapper. But it's still a great perk because it gives you time, it boosts your action speed. So it's still a great perk to have uh, whenever you're playing as a Trapper. And then Save the Best for Last. This is a tricky perk to have because you want to avoid hitting your obsession, especially when you begin to stack up at the points associated with uh, Save the Best for Last. But still, once you've gotten seven tokens or eight tokens with Save the Best for Last, then it becomes a really, really powerful perk. And then last but not least, we have Devour of Hope. And incredibly, I nearly forgot to include this particular perk. And uh, this perk is actually one of my favorite uh, Hex Totem perks because the one advantage the Valve Hope has over Hex Win or Hunter's Lullaby is the fact that survivors, unless they see the totem, they will not know that you're actually running the Valve Hope until it becomes active and then you begin to strike down survivors. With Hex Win, it's almost obvious they start fixing a gen, a skill check pops up, 
they see the red circle, they know, oh, okay, the killer has X-Win. Uh, same thing with $100 buy as well. It's almost instant survivors know that you have these perks running or you have this hex to them somewhere around the map. But with the Vow of Hope, it only becomes obvious once it's active and you've actually struck down one of your survivors. So the Vow of Hope is definitely one of those perks that you should try running uh, with the Trapper. So now let's take a look at the other kinds of perks, the perks that are not optimal to run whenever you're playing as the Trapper. And I know on this list we have some really, really good perks. However, in my humble experience and opinion, I don't think these perks are optimal in the hands of the Trapper. So we have Bitter Momo, we have Tinkerer. These two recently got changes and buffs, but the thing about them is that it requires a certain amount of mobility. With Bitter Momo, you will get the hours of survivors within 60 meters of a completed gen. With Tinkerer, you will be notified whenever a gen is about to be complete. The problem here with the Trapper is that he doesn't have the same kind of speed as the Hillbilly, the Nurse, or even a Cloaked Wraith. So the time it will take for him to get to a gen that's about to be done, especially if that gen is across the map, or the time it will take for him to get to a gen that's just been done, if it's across the map, again, it, it will take quite some time. So these two perks are not optimal in the hands of the Trapper. They're much better off with the likes of the Nurse, the Wraith, or even uh, the Hillbilly. Now, the stressing, unnerving presence, overwhelming presence, all these have to do with the terror radius. Now, this might come as a shock to you because I know it's a very popular uh, opinion out there, but I don't think the Trapper is a good killer to have a build based off of a terror radius. In fact, I think the best killer for this would be the Doctor. And of course, I'll discuss this in more detail when I make a tutorial on how to play as a Doctor. But with the Trapper, you're better off with perks that boost your speed or slow down the actions of survivors. Uh, the stressing, the nerving presence, the rolling presence, these are not gonna do that much for you, especially when you're playing against uh, higher ranked survivors. Now, Make Your Choice is an excellent perk. However, it does have the requirement that you must be 32 meters away from the hook at tier three. And again, because the trapper doesn't have the same kind of mobility as the hillbilly, this perk is not optimal in the hands of the Trapper unless you very deliberately would want to hook a survivor and then you kind of camp just 32 meters or more away from that hook waiting for the save and then you go after the survivor who made the save. Unless you play deliberately like that, make a choice is not optimal with the Trapper. Dying Light, again, unless you have a Mori and then you tunnel your obsession right from the start of the game, Dying Light will not be optimal with the Trapper. Monotone Abuse is better off with the likes of the Hag, uh, with uh, with uh, Michael Myers, obviously. But the Trapper, again, eh, it's not it's not optimal. Chlorophobia, another pick based off of uh, Terror Radius, not optimal with the Trapper. And then finally, Shadowborn. Shadowborn is a perk I have used a few times, and it's okay. It's it's a nice pick to have, but again, not optimal in the hands of the Trapper. So once again, these are the perks that I believe are not optimal. They're not the best kinds of perks to run whenever you're playing as the Trapper. They're okay perks, they're good perks, but I feel the previous list has better perks that you can run uh, whenever you're playing as Daddy Trapper. Let's now take a look at the add-ons that you have with the Trapper. And the very first set of add-ons would be the bag add-ons. You have the Trapper sack, you've got the Trapper bag, and then finally, you've got the uh, stitched bag. These add-ons allow you to carry extra beer traps with you, and you also start the game with extra beer traps as well. So these are really good set of add-ons that you can run. The next set of add-ons, unfortunately, are probably the least useful of his add-ons, and that would be the coils. You've got the strong coil spring. Uh, you have the uh, foil coil spring kit. You have the secondary coil, and finally, you have the oily coil. What these add-ons do is that it increases the time it takes for survivors to disarm your traps and also sabotage your traps. Now, on the surface, that might sound very useful, but the truth is nowadays, most survivors do not spend time sabotaging your traps. Most survivors do not want saboteur anymore, and even if they had a toolbox with them, they would rather use the toolbox to fix gens or even sabotage hooks, if anything. So you're not going to have too many survivors who will sabotage your traps. And then the time it takes for survivors to disarm your traps, even, even with the oily coil, 
it's still just a few seconds it's not really going to change the outcome of the game so the coil add-ons in my humble opinion are the add-ons to avoid uh, whenever you're playing as the trapper the next set of add-ons would be the add-ons that involve uh, the time it takes for you to set your traps so you've got the trapper gloves very good you've got the uh, trap setters and then finally you have the setting tools these allow you to set your traps a lot faster in the past with the old trapper this used to be one of the most important add-ons but ever since with the buff where the trapper now sets his traps faster by default these sort of add-ons have kind of lost their importance but they're still really good add-ons you can run with they're just not quite as useful as they once were and then you have the uh, logwood die and then you have the tar bottle these two add-ons make the traps darker making it more difficult for survivors to see them so these can be quite useful in certain maps like the macmillan estate maybe even the Colden farm but in other maps like the levees or even the game yeah, these add-ons could be quite uh, useless in such an instance because survivors will still be able to see uh, your traps regardless now you've also got the wax brick this is a really good add-on which kind of goes unnoticed it moderately reduces the time it takes for survivors to escape your bear trap one of the frustrations which i forgot to mention of playing as the trapper is the fact that there are many instances where right in front of you a survivor will step onto a trap and as you begin to approach them to either pick them up or hit them they're able to free themselves from the trap and then they begin a chase that can be very very frustrating so with the wax brick it will take it a little bit longer for survivors or rather it will reduce the chance for survivors to escape the bear trap quickly so this is a pretty good add-on that you can run whenever you're playing as the trapper uh, you also have the padded jaws which i haven't used too often this is a great add-on for getting extra blood points what happens here is that whenever a survivor steps on a bear trap it will not inflict damage to them however you will get a hundred percent of bonus blood points uh, whenever survivors will step uh, on the trap so it's a pretty good add-on if you are all about getting blood points and then we also have the uh, fastening tools this particular add-on used to be quite possibly one of the worst add-ons with the old trapper because what it did was it made it longer for survivors to disarm or sabotage your traps but then it also took longer for you as a trapper to set your traps so it was not a really good add-on but ever since the new uh, change the new changes to the buff trapper this is a fantastic fantastic add-on to have it tremendously increases your bear trap setting speed it increases the rescue and escape time from bear traps and moderately also reduces the chance to escape a bear trap as well so this is a really 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 good add-on that you can run whenever you're playing as Jeppa. definitely one of the best add-ons the chapel has and then finally we have the uh iridescent stone and the honing stone as well and then finally the bloody coil but let's talk about the honing stone and the iridescent stone the honing stone right now what it does is if a survivor frees themselves from the trap they will be inflicted with the dying state instantly in the past this used to have a 50 percent chance so it's either they were inflicted with the dying state or the weren't but now it's 100 percent so honing stone is a great perk or a great add-on to have however one thing to point out here is that if another survivor freeze the survivor who stepped on the trap they will not be put into the dying state it's important to understand that distinction now with the iridescent stone this particular add-on in my humble opinion is the strongest add-on the trapper has so what it does is every 30 seconds one closed bear trap opens automatically one random bear trap just opens automatically what this does is it buys the trapper so much time because a lot of times as a trapper you might set one trap you go off chasing the survivor and then another survivor will come see that you've placed the trap right there and then they will disable the trap they will disarm the trap and it can be really really frustrating especially when you've placed a trap where survivors tend to pass through maybe it's a very popular uh, window or maybe it's the it's the window at the shack where survivors love to vault through 
So nothing can be more frustrating when you've placed a really good trap right there. You're chasing the survivor, the survivor is going towards a particular uh, direction, and then another survivor goes and disables that trap. You know, it can be very frustrating, but with the iridescent stone, these traps will pop back up. So once you set a trap, even if it's disabled, it will open up by itself later on in the game. So it's a really, really fantastic add-on to have with the trapper. And then the bloody coil. This add-on is fantastic because now certain maps where the killer, where the trapper used to be very, very poor at, which would be um, Larry's and the game, with this particular kind of add-on, such maps actually become a heaven whenever you're playing as a trapper. Because what, what it does is, if you lay down a trap and a survivor goes on to disable or disarm that trap, they will be inflicted with the injured state. So this is actually the kind of add-on where you want survivors to see your traps and disarm them because they will get injured in the process. So Bloody Coil is a fantastic add-on to also have uh, whenever you're playing in certain kinds of maps. So there you have it for the add-ons. Now let's talk about the strategies involved whenever you play as the Trapper. All right, so before we delve into the final part where I discuss strategy, I wanted to spend a few minutes to provide you with my favorite builds whenever I am playing as the Trapper. And the very first one you can see right here would be the basic or the standard build. This is a build where I don't have any specific objective or any specific uh, strategy other than just having a good game, killing survivors, getting blood points, ranking up. And in here, I would always have Gnosis Calling and Noed. These two would always be in my basic build. Gnosis Calling for tracking, Noed as insurance for the end of the game. And then the next two perk slots would be perks that either increase my speed as the killer or slow down the actions of survivors. In this case right now, in this particular variation, you've got Sloppy Butcher and Brutal Strength. Now, I could substitute Sloppy Butcher with uh, Thanthophobia in another variation. Brutal Strength, I could remove Brutal Strength and then go with Hex Ruin, or I could even go with uh, Pop Goes the Weasel. This would be another variation of this standard build. So, in every version of the, of the standard build, I will have Nosus Calling, Noed, those two always, and then the next two perk slots would be perks that either increase my speed as the killer or slow down the actions of survivors. For the add-ons, usually Wax Brick and then uh, Trapper Sack, although this can change. I could go with the setting tools, I could go with serrated jaws, it really doesn't matter. And then the offering would usually be uh, offerings for blood points, any kind of offering that will provide me with extra blood points. The second kind of build I have here is what I refer to as the obsession build, where I have a very specific target, which is to find my obsession as quickly as possible and then kill them as quickly as I can. So in here, I've got Dying Light, which is brutal when you're able to kill the obsession the other survivors will have a 25 percent penalty to repairing speed healing speed and so on and then i have remember me now i know this might sound a bit contradictory why have remember me and then uh dying light at the same time well here's the thing okay with remember me when you find your survivor you hit them twice before they go down the first time so that's two tokens for remember me and then if they have Decisive Strike, they hit you with a Decisive Strike, you find them again, you hit them, that's the third token, if you remember me, you hook them, they get saved, you hit them the first time, they go down, and then you kill them with your Ivory Memento Mori, that's four stacks of Remember Me. And even in certain situations where the survivor was rescued by another survivor who has burrow time, you might have to hit them an extra time to get them on the ground, so that'll be five tokens or remember me so by the time you are able to kill your obsession you already have five tokens of remember me and then dying light and thanatophobia come into play which is just brutal and then i've got no ed to serve as an insurance because a lot of times when you run dying light and you try to hunt down your, your obsession you might actually not find them until maybe the mid game or the end of the game and by that time dying light would be quite useless so I would always have Noed as insurance, should in case such a thing happens. And then with add-ons, to be fair, these two, mm, they change. I could use a trapper sack or a stitched bag or a deserted jaws add-ons. These two don't really matter. But for the offering, whenever I am running Dying Light, 
I would always have this uh, Memento Mori with me, the Ivy Memento Mori, so that I can Mori my obsession as quickly as I can and then bring in Dying Lights to affect uh, the other survivors. Alright, so the third build right here would be what I refer to as the Slog build, where I basically slog survivors. Now, I must admit that this is not my favorite kind of build because I'm not a slogger, I prefer hooking survivors, I love my hooks. But sometimes you want to try something new, you know, just to freshen things up. So this would be my preferred build uh, for slogging with the Trapper. You've got Sloppy Butcher, you've got Noed again as insurance at, for the end of the game. You've got Thanthophobia and you have uh, Dear Stalker to tr track down survivors you've put on the ground. Now for the add-ons, this is very, very important. You have the Honing Stone so that if survivors free themselves from a trap, they will be inflicted the dying state instantly. And then with Dear Stalker, you can track them down. And then Bloody Coil so that if survivors decide to disarm your traps, they will be inflicted with the injured state, which would also uh, stack up with Thanatophobia, which is pretty good. And then for the orphan in this kind of situation, uh, this would be usually with uh, uh, orphans that will provide, provide me with extra blood points. So maybe uh, Survivor Pudding, uh, Bloody Party Streamers, stuff like that. That would usually be the add-on I would add for this particular kind of build. So the very final build here is what I refer to as the Terminator build. And usually this is the kind of build I want whenever I'm really pissed off, I've been having a bad day, and I just want to take out my frustrations on the survivors. This is the build I would run with. So right off the bat, you can tell I have the red Ebony Memento Mori because I'm really pissed. I'm gonna Mori every single survivor. I've got my two red add-ons as well. And then for the perks, you can see I've got Brutal Strength, Bamboozle and Enduring. These three are all aimed at me becoming or are there to make me kind of like the unstoppable killer where I just go through everything. I go after the survivor and I hit them. I kill them no matter what. So Brutal Strength allow me to break pallets faster. Bamboozle so I can vault faster and then Enduring so I can recover faster from stuns whether it's pallets or decisive strike. And then finally Barbecue and Chili to give me some extra uh, blood points but also with tracking. Especially if I'm going for the 4K, Barbecue actually can serve as a tear stalker in certain instances. So if I've killed the first two survivors and I've downed the other two survivors, I hook the third survivor, Barbecue actually can tell me where the fourth survivor is and then I can go over there and uh, mori them. So this would be my Terminator build, the build I run whenever I'm really pissed off and I really want to kill survivors. All right, so welcome to the final part of this tutorial where we'll talk about in-game strategy. And the very first strategy here is the psychological strategy where you basically fool survivors into thinking that you're gonna lay a trap when in fact all you're trying to do is to get them to run away from an area of the map where there's a pallet or where there's uh, a loop going on. So in this case right now, I'm chasing Jake. This is the Auto Haven Wreckers. You can see Jake healing himself right here. There's a pallet over here as well. So let me just play the clip and show you what I did. Uh, let's play the clip. So right now you can see that Jake is attempting to do the whole looping maneuver where I'll go around, he comes over, over to where the pallet is, and then if I'm close enough, he'll probably drop the pallet, wait for me to break the pallet, and then he will run. So what I did here to stop this loop instantly was to pretend that I'm going to lay a trap so you can see me right there, I am trying to set the trap, but in fact, I did not set the trap, I stopped. And as soon as Jake saw me trying to lay the trap right there, what did Jake do? Jake started to run away because he felt, oh no, he's going to put a trap right next to that pallet. I will not be able to run over there, so let me just run over to another area of the map. So over there, I was able to fool Jake into running away. In the same game, this is with uh, Feng Min the same exact spot, you will see Feng Min around here, so that's Feng Min. Feng Min was going to do the, the exact same thing, but what I did was to pretend once again I was going to lay a trap, Feng Min saw me laying the trap, and then she decided to uh, run away. So again, this tactic works quite a lot. Here is another game in, at the Macmillan Estate where I'm chasing another Jake, and so over here again we have the same kind of loop where you'd run around here, run around here. What I did was, I came over here, Pretended I was gonna lay the trap, stopped, and then of course Jake immediately began to run away because he felt I was going to lay uh, the trap. There are many examples of this. Uh, there's another one in here which I'm gonna show you. 
and uh, oh that was embarrassing <laughs> all right so here's another one where i'm chasing a nia and this was a particularly tough game for me because these survivors were actually really really good especially this nia she was she was a pain in, in, uh, in the butt so in here right now you can see her trying to uh, get away she's got a flashlight and she was going to attempt to do the whole looping maneuver she will drop the pallet or break the pallet, she will stun me, she will get away, she will waste my time. So what I did here was to simply go back to the pallet, again, pretend like I was going to lay the trap. Nia, thinking that, oh my gosh, he's blocking that, uh, that, that path, let me start running away. And there you go, Nia, running away. So this is why I love to refer to as the trapper as the uh, anti-loop uh, killer. He's basically one of the very few killers that can stop survivors from going around endless loops or from going around the pallet just pretend that you're gonna lay a trap okay and then don't lay it start and then immediately stop i can guarantee you that in most cases the survivor would already begin to run away because they will think oh my gosh you're about to block that path let me run to another area of the map so that's one strategy you can employ uh, to fool survivors the second strategy i'm going to talk about here involves the actual uh setting of traps in what areas of the map do you set your traps? This is very, very important, very, very critical. If you're able to lay your traps at the best spots in the map, then this will greatly increase your ability to kill survivors. But if you lay your traps in the most obvious places and your trap placements aren't good, well, guess what? Your chances of winning as the trapper would be uh, severely hindered. So in here right now, uh, this is a clip from a game I played at the Auto Heaven Wreckers. Uh, a map that's notorious for having lots of pallets, by the way. So what did I do? I apologize if the quality of the video is not too good. It had to do with my recording, unfortunately. But hopefully you can see where I'm placing the trap. So this is the Auto Haven Wreckers. Now, this tends to be a very popular spot because it's right next to the actual building. Survivors can loop here a lot. Now, a lot of trappers would end up placing the trap right next to this pallet where you have uh, the truck and then the pallet. They would place the trap around there. But what I did was, because that's very obvious, especially when you're playing against high rank survivors, what I did was to lay the trap right here instead, right next to the wall and the tires, all right? So I laid the trap right here, and because this is such, uh, let me just rewind that a little bit so you see it better. Now, this particular spot is unusual. You're not gonna find too many trappers who would place traps right here. But the best way I can describe this to you is whenever you're thinking about laying a trap, think of the paths that a survivor would most likely pass through. Think of yourself as a survivor. If you're going to go into a building or you're going to go to a generator, for example, what path are you most likely to take? Most of the time, it's going to be paths that are very narrow and paths that are of the shortest distance. So in this case right now, survivors would not go around this set of tires if they're going to go into the building or if they're going to go to the pallet they would rather walk through this particular uh, path because it's shorter for them to get to the pallet it's shorter for them to get into the building so i simply decided to place the trap right there at that particular spot that particular narrow spot where the survivor would most likely pass through and as you're going to see right now uh light <laughs> down there has gotten trapped i'm going to show you and uh, I'm just going to show you right now. So you can see it's right there on that particular spot where I placed that trap. So that worked for me. And let me just, uh, okay, let's keep going. So sometimes you can also lay traps at obvious locations, like right here next to this pallet, I placed the trap and it worked for me, okay? In these kinds of scenarios, it can work sometimes because survivors are scared. When you're chasing them as the trapper or you're chasing them as a killer, they stop to think about, oh, where would the killer have placed the trap? All they're thinking about is I need to protect myself. I need to get to that pallet. So a lot of times you will come across survivors who would not think first about, is there a trap over there? They'll be thinking more of, oh, that's a pallet. I need to get to that pallet. So in this particular case right now, placing traps right next to pallets can be a good idea, but most of the time, you're better off placing the trap either just before the pallet or after the pallet. Place them in places that are not super obvious if you want the optimal results. But again, in certain situations like this, it can work, all right? So 
you kind of like have to play it both ways now again in the same particular uh, map the same game I placed the trap in that particular spot the second time the spot in between the wall and the tires and you can see poor Kate right here because she was attempting to go into the building so she can start the loop that loop where you go through the window you will go down and stuff her desire to get into the building with the quickest of time led her to go through this particular path again she would not have gone through this other path right across those tires over there she decided to go through the path between the tires and the wall because it's the shortest path for her to get into the building so you can see once again she ended up getting trapped and uh well spoiler alert i ended up killing all uh four survivors in the game so basically that's how to place your traps whenever you're playing as the trapper try to place them in spots that are not super obvious place them in spots where a survivor would most likely pass through remember the survivors tend to take the shortest distance uh, between two points so if they're trying to get to uh, a generator or trying to get to a building they will go through the path that will get them to that location in the shortest possible amount of time so you can trap those those parts trap uh, narrow spots as well you can trap uh, locations in between two objects maybe a tree and uh, uh, a pallet or maybe a tree and a building stuff like that try to be as unpredictable as possible whenever you're laying your traps don't just be uh, stupid about it and start laying your traps at the end of the map where no one would ever go to unless in, very, unless in certain situations place your traps in unpredictable spots but spots that you feel that this survivor would most likely go through these spots to get to that gen or to get to that building that's the best um, places for placing your traps all right so two final tips before i go tip number one always make sure you have one trap with you whenever you start chasing a survivor because if you don't have that trap you will not be able to employ the psychological trick i showed you earlier where you pretend to lay a trap when in fact you're trying to get them to run away from a particular area of the map so always make sure you have one trap with you whenever you're chasing a survivor if you start a chase you don't have a you don't have a trap with you but along the, along along the chase you are able to see a trap around you stop the chase pick up the trap continue with the chase it's always uh, better that way do not go after a survivor without a trap in your hand and then second remember that any extra traps you have with you are useless until you actually set them any extra traps you have in your stitched bag or your travel bag are useless they're not gonna injure survivors or slow them down until you actually set them so always try to set as many traps as possible the more traps you have set on a map the higher the chances you will be able to trap one of your survivors and your chances of being successful as a trapper will increase as a result so two tips always have a trap with you whenever you're chasing a survivor and always try to set as many traps as possible Woo! okay so we've come to the end of this long complete guide on how to play as the trapper and it is my sincere hope that you've gained some few tips you've learned one or two things about how to play as the trapper and i really hope i've been able to increase or spark an interest in you uh, when it comes to playing as the trapper and the trapper is one of my favorite killers i love playing as the trapper he's not a top tier killer by any stretch of the imagination he's not like the hillbilly the nurse the huntress michael myers but he's definitely mid tier and if you play him correctly he can wipe out squads of survivors, even rank 1 survivors. So if you like this video, please do consider subscribing to the channel to get more tutorials like this. I will be making more guides on how to play as Michael Myers, the Doctor, Huntress and so on. So if you want future tutorials like this, subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. And you can also like the video, share the video with anyone whom you feel might be able to benefit from this tutorial and uh finally as well let me know what you thought about this guide did you like the guide uh did you feel i did something wrong was there something you didn't like about this guide let me know and if you're good with me when it comes to the strategies the add-ons the perk builds let me know as well if you don't agree let me know let me know what you or let me know how you play as the trapper i do love to learn from other uh players as well i'm a small time youtuber i don't get too many comments on my videos so i do tend to read uh, all the comments so let me know what you thought about this particular guide so there you have it thank you so much once again for sticking around and uh, until next time bye bye